So in our last lesson, we learned how to multiply a singular number by every term in an element. That was called a scalar multiple. Today, we're going to take and multiply two matrices together. Now, in order to even be able to do this, we have to make sure one thing holds true. We have to make sure to multiply the two matrices A and B, the number of columns in matrix A. So if this is matrix A right here, right, rows by columns, the number of columns in matrix A must equal the number of rows in matrix B. Let's call this rows because it's rows by columns in matrix B. And the dimensions of the product end up being the following. Notice if this is an M by N and an N by P, the solution is in this case an M by P matrix, like so. A numerical example would be if I have a 5 by 2, I need a 2 by something to be able to multiply in the first place, and the solution dimension would be a 5 by 1. Because of this fact, multiplication is not commutative under matrices. For instance, commutative, remember, is change in order, so I cannot do a 2 by 1 multiplied by a 5 by 2 because the number of columns in the first doesn't equal the number of rows in the second now. Now, in order to multiply these matrices, and this is going to be tough in, in verbiage, but I'll show you an example in a minute. The element in the nth row and the rth column of matrix AB is the sum of the products of the corresponding elements in row M of matrix A and column R of matrix B. That makes absolutely no sense to you, most likely, which is why I'm going to do an example. So, here we go. Right here, I have a two rows by three column matrix and a three row by one column matrix, as illustrated here. Because the number of columns in the first equal the number of rows in the second, I can multiply. Thus, my solution dimension is a two by one. Now, what's a two by one look like? Two rows, one column. So in this case, I have an element A sub 1, 1 and A sub 2, 1. Remember, this is first row, first column, second row, first column. That's what the subscripts mean. So in order to multiply, here's what's going to happen. I need to get my first row, first column element. And what this tells me right here is exactly what two things I'm going to multiply together. I'm going to match the corresponding elements in the first row to the corresponding elements in the first column and multiply them together and then take the sum of all their products. So first row, first column, I have 4 multiplied by negative 1, first row, first column. Now the second term is a 2 and a 3, so I have 2 times 3. And then the first row, first column, third elements in each case is 1 and 1. So notice, row by column, matching elements. Right now, I need my second row, second column. So here's my second row, second column. Matching elements. 1 of the negative type and negative 1, so I have negative 1 times negative 1. Next I have 0 and 3. And finally 2 and 1. Combine now, that's negative 4 plus 6, which is 2, plus 1, which is 3. And then 1, 0, plus 2 is 3. So now my solution is a two row, one, two, by one column matrix. And I'm done. Let's do a few more of these. So in this case, I have a three by two multiplied by a two by two. Notice rows first, or columns first, equal to rows a second. Solution is the outside dimensions. So 3 by 2. What's a 3 by 2 look like? 3 rows, 2 columns, 
here. And all the elements are listed. 1-1, one, one, which is first row, first column, first row, second column, second row, first column, second row, second column, third row, first column, third row, second column. These tell me what to multiply. So I need my first row, first column term. Here's my first row, and here's my first column in the corresponding matrices. So I'm going to match those up. Zero gets multiplied to one, and negative one gets multiplied to two. Next, I'm going to take my first row and second column. So here's my first row again of matrix A and my second column of B. Notice, one, zero gets matched up with negative one again. And this time, negative one gets matched up with three. Next, I move to my second row of the first matrix, first column of the second matrix, second row, first column. So my corresponding matchups are one and one, and two and two. Then I move to my second row, second column. Here's the second row of the first, second column of the second. Match them up. There's one and negative one and two and three. Finally, third row, first column. Here's my third row and my first column. Match them up. Four and one, three, and two. And then third row, second column. Here's my third row, second column. Match them up. There's a four and a negative one and a three, and a three. And now we'll take and do all our products and sums. That's zero and negative two. That's one and four, which is five. That's four and six, which is 10. That's zero and negative three, which is negative three. Negative one and six, which is five. Negative four and nine, which is five again. And notice dimensions, three rows, two columns. Let's continue. So this is a little bit more intricate. I'm going to do what's in parentheses first. Notice I have a scalar multiple here and a sum here. In order to have a sum, I have to have equal dimensions, which I clearly do. So I'm going to rewrite this. I'll say I have one. 0, 4, 5, negative 2, negative 1. I multiply by 2 and add 4 to it, so that's a total of 6. I multiply by 2 and add 10 to it, that's 10. I multiply by 2 and add negative 1 to it, that's negative 7. So now you'll notice that I have a two rows by three columns multiplied by a three rows by one column, which yield a solution of a two by one. Two by one, a one one, a two one. That's my giveaway. Multiply the first row to the first column. I end up with the following. I get 1 matching with 6. I get 0 matching with 10. And I get 4 matching with negative 7. Then I go to second row right here. First column right here. I have 5 matching with the 6. Negative 2 matching with the 10. And negative 1 matching with the negative sign. Clean it up. That's a 6, 0, and negative 28 gives me a negative 22. 30 and negative 20 
is a positive 10, a positive 7, a 17, and there's my two rows, one column solution. Now we want to find x and y. Now notice I have an equation here. So if two matrices are equal, the elements in each matrix are the same. But in this matrix, I have to do a multiplication. I have a 2 by 2 multiplied by a 2 by 1. That's going to yield a 2 by 1 solution. So rows by columns. So this is 2 times negative 1 plus 2 times x. Next, rows by columns, I have a 5 times negative 1 and a 7 times 2. That should equal the matrix of 6 and 2y. Clean it up, this goes to negative 2 plus 2x, negative 5 and 14 is 9. That should equal the matrix of 6 and 2y. If these two matrices are equal, their elements must be equal. So therefore, negative 2 plus 2x equals 6. And 9 must equal 2y. Solve each. We get 2x equals 8, and x equals 4, and then divide by 2, and I get 9 halves equals y, and I solve for x and y. Similar problem, the end solution is going to be a little bit more difficult. Again, rows by column multiplication, so I have 4 and x pairing up y and 1, so I'll just call that y, and then I have a negative 1 row by column again, negative 1 and 4, and 6x and 1. That matrix is going to equal 2x and 3y, so I have 4x plus y, is equal to 2x and negative 4 plus 6x equals 3y. Notice I've got a system now and I can use substitution to solve. I can use a whole number of things. I'll use substitution in this case. So I know using this equation right here that y equals negative 2x. So everywhere I see a y in my second equation, I'm going to plug in a negative 2x. Therefore, I have negative 4 plus 6x equals 3 times, instead of saying y, I'm going to say negative 2x. So now I have negative 6x equals negative 4 plus 6x. Bring that x over. I've got negative 12x equals negative 4, and 1 third equals x. If x is equal to 1 third, I can pop back in and find y. y equals negative 2 times x, which is 1 third. Therefore, y equals negative 2 thirds. And I'm done. That's all we've got. Hopefully it made sense. Do your connect ed problems. Fill out your, your summary for lesson 19, and we'll see you tomorrow.